I remember subliminal messaging being a bigger deal back when I was a teenager, and often television ads and children's cartoons were accused of using such tech. But what about today? With everyone online, how would subliminal messaging work? Where would you likely find this technology at work in a world where anyone online could do this? Of course, there are laws surrounding this depending on the country, but I do not believe for one second that this is something that was just abandoned by those who could profit greatly from using it. So we are going to take a closer look at this technology and find out the truth about these techniques being used in today's media. This is a message that requires your attention. There is a technique that is used in media and marketing to influence a person's thoughts, behavior, or actions. Because this technique involves the use of split-second flashes or camouflaged text, images, and audio, the affected person is unaware of the subtle cue and is therefore affected on the subconscious level. At least, that is how it's supposed to work. In 1957, market researcher James Vicary thought of a plan to increase business for his movie theater. Picnic in Fort Lee would be showing there, and Vicary decided to slip in a frame or two of the phrases, eat popcorn and drink Coca-Cola. Later, Vicary reported that the subliminal ads increased his Coke sales by 18.1% and his popcorn sales by 57.8%. But it turns out that those sales reports were false. When you think about that, think about this. How do you remember something that you were not paying attention to? The only time subliminal messaging works is when you are primed for it and you know that there is a subliminal message there. You just don't know what it is. Because in order for the message to be processed by your brain, it requires a fair amount of focus and memory. Do people really think that their brains are so weak that anyone could just flash some words in front of them and they are now under someone else's control? This is why subliminal messaging in advertising is not illegal. In some places it is, but the main reason is because people are hard-headed. You simply can't get into someone's head that way. Think about how easy something like parenting would be if you could just flash texts and images in front of a child's face all day like the lawnmower man. Although many do have their faces in mobile devices all day, that is a greater matter for another discussion. By the way, this also applies to advanced learning techniques like sleep learning. Again, where is your attention focused while you are sleeping? Yes, you can still sense sound, but your mind is not focused on whatever is playing in the background while you sleep. You know it's a lot faster if you try learning something when you are awake. They try to come up with methods that could allow for sleep learning, but all you can really do right now is sleep conditioning. In other words, you could condition yourself to react to certain sensory cues while you are asleep that will carry over when you are awake. However, in a study, the people were not aware of the conditioning and didn't know why they reacted a certain way towards certain stimuli. Languages cannot be learned in your sleep. Maybe tones and certain words can be conditioned into your head while you sleep, but you lose quality in your sleep 
therefore affecting the memory you develop in the day. Because when you sleep, your mind takes all that data and it moves it around to organize it while you sleep. If you have outside stimuli disturbing your sleep, you do more harm than good. It's not hypnosis, which is therapy for someone who is awake or conscious. We have a long way to go with hypnopedia, but I do know of some methods of learning that can increase your retention and speed for absorbing the information. But of course, things that require practice are going to take more time. The best way to get someone to remember something is by having an emotion attached to that memory. For example, a trick to never forgetting where you left your car keys is when you set down your car keys, let's say you set them on a coffee table. Imagine the coffee table catching fire and spreading quickly. Or imagine the table exploding. Or imagine your keys get up on their own and start doing a little dance. The emotions attached to the event of you setting down your keys will dramatically help your memory when you need to find your keys again because of the attention and emotion you have attached to that event. Why do you think it is so easy for people to develop PTSD? They have locked that event in a neural pathway of the brain. This often leads to chronic pain and depression and a way to reverse it is by tapping into that neural pathway and bridging a new one. This often leads to bad dreams because your body is shedding the neural pathway that was once plaguing you. Want to increase your reading speed? Start reading three to five words at once instead of one word at a time with multiple books at the same time. Your brain will catch up. The same goes for audio. You can listen to an audio lecture or lesson at two, three, four times the speed till the person speaking sounds like a chipmunk. And your brain will catch up to the point where that fast speed becomes almost normal to you. Sleep is very important for your memory and bridging new neural pathways. There are many, many things you can apply to learning and memory retention that are effective. Subliminal messaging and sleep learning are not that effective, if at all. Subliminal messaging is still used today, but of course, if you are aware of it, it's not subliminal. In fact, many advertisers, music artists, and movie companies have been using these techniques as simple gimmicks to increase sales. And that is what's effective. People find out that there's a subliminal message in something they want to see. Disney is probably the most famous for this. And they do it almost like it's tradition, all the time. The subliminals are not intended to work. They simply put them in as a marketing attraction. And of course, sex sells. This happens openly today. We call them Easter eggs in movies and TV shows, right? Things in the background. So subtle you probably wouldn't have seen it unless someone pointed it out to you. We are all well aware of product placement. So the techniques have well evolved over the years and we are truly dealing with a different beast when it comes to programming and audience. And that goes back to conditioning the masses. Backmasking was a big gimmick for music artists back in the day. Led Zeppelin, Queen, Judas Priest. Judas Priest actually got into trouble when two guys killed themselves to one of their songs. People tried to blame the song and Judas Priest for putting a subliminal message in their song, but they denied it. The two guys who were suicidal, how do two depressed suicidal people get in the same room at the same time? I'll never know, but people claim that in the background of that song was the phrase, do it, do it, do it. And they believe that is what pushed the two over the edge. But it was just actually a sound effect in the background that happened to sound like do it. One of the guys died and the other was disfigured beyond recognition and then died a few years later. They could not link the song to their suicide pact. 
So, of course, they had to throw that case out. Again, music artists would sometimes do this on purpose because on records, you could record something backwards onto an album. Much harder to do today. But it was done to attract sales once people heard that there were secret messages on them. Now, I know that there are those who believe that there are people using these techniques to cast spells or to get you to unwittingly call out or to conjure some demonic force. Again, these are gimmicks. It takes some real intent and focus to cast a spell. It takes a serious investment of yourself for it to work. And even when you do all that right, there is no guarantee anything will happen as a result. The devil doesn't use subliminals. He uses lies that come by the way of the absolute truth. In the garden, Eve was told the truth, but it was told in such a way that it would cause her to have a distorted view of the truth, which is a very cunning way of lying. And this technique is used today a lot. It's nothing new. We just don't see it because it is in our faces all the time. All the time. We are bombarded by it. Some people believe that there are codes hidden in old media and ancient text. I know there are people who have questioned things such as the title of the Holy Bible. You know what someone posted online? This is just an example. They wrote, The all-seeing eye. What does the all-seeing eye have to do with this hunt? The Bible says I, E-Y-E, am the first and the last. Look at the last letters of the name of that famous book, The Holy Bible, E-Y-E. Is the Bible the all-seeing eye? What happens when you reverse the name of the Bible so that the I is the first letter? el bib yol et Count the letters of each word to get 543, the standard gematria value of LVB et equals 1, 2, 3. Add this to the letter count of the reversed words, which form the I to get 543 equals 1, 2, 3, which equals 666. Six, six. Well, I guess this person has figured it all out, haven't they? Let me ask you all something. Are you that smart? Are you smart enough to decode something that may or may not be there? There are 26 letters in a 1,200-page book. What do you think you are going to decode? Are you Tom Hanks? Have fun with it, but understand that it is just entertainment. Woodward TV that's six seven seven four six one two four four six. See, there's three sixes. Six six six. He should be called Devil TV. Yet there are three fours and two sevens. What does that mean? I don't know. Let me go pull out my star chart. People engage in this stuff all the time, and my question is, to what end? There are many influences in our world. Some good, some demonic, but they do not come in the form of subliminal messages or codes. For the devil, there is no need to hide when you can just lie. There is more to come as I will be covering the topics of numerology and codes, ancient codes. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. I have some new designs and elements coming to the store and to the site, so stay tuned. And as always, friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.